Hey everybody and welcome to this iOS development tutorial. In this particular video, we're going to take a look at how you can implement a UI refresh control. Now if that particular term uh, rings no bells for you, no problem. If you've got an iOS based device um, and you've used, for example, the mail application within that particular on that particular device, you've probably seen a UI refresh control. Now what a UI refresh control is typically used for is uh, say you've got a table view very much like the one that I've got on screen. You can see it contains a number of rows with some data in it. And when you pull down that row, you see a little indicator that says it's going to try and retrieve new data for you. So again, pull it down, you see it's working, it tries to retrieve new data. Now in this case, nothing has happened, nothing's changed. But let me show you how we can uh, change that. So here's a page that I've got, and I'll just reload it real quick. I've built this page. Um, using PHP and MySQL and don't worry about this you can use the exact same page uh, when you are building your sample application um, all this page does this page for example is takes a string value enters it into a database and then I've got a corresponding page that then retrieves that data from the database in JSON format so this is sort of a part two or sort of side to this uh, particular tutorial is that we're going to be using PHP MySQL and JSON to pull that data back but again, we're not going to cover any of that stuff in this tutorial. You want to use the exact same URLs that I am. And really, all we want to show is how that UI refresh control works. So again, if you remember, our last row here is uh, Mesut Otsil, who from um, Arsenal, in case you're following the BPL. Um, I'm going to go ahead and add a, another player. Uh, it's a favorite of mine. And we're just going to hit submit that adds it to our table and then we've got something called contact list which is a essentially like i said just a json feed i'm gonna hit refresh and you see chavi got added uh to that particular row all right so let's go back to our table view now here again nothing's happened but watch what happens when i pull down on this wait for it to update and then let's try this again let go notice that this time Chavi shows up as that new row. Now the beauty here of course is we are able to update the data in this particular view without moving away from this view controller or even shutting down the application and reloading it. We can do it right there while the users got that exact view controller up on screen. So that is the magic of the UI refresh control. So let's see how we might build something just like this. All right, so to get started, I wanted to show you all real quick what version of Xcode I'm using. I'm running Xcode version 5.0.2, so as long as you're running Xcode 5 or something later, you should be good. Um, I'm also going to be targeting the iPhone and uh, iOS 7 in this particular video. So let's see how we might build a UI refresh control. Okay, so we've got uh, a choice to make here. We want to pick a template for our project. We're actually going to pick single view application. That's just the simplest one uh, we can use with some basic code added in. And I'm going to call this UI refresh control for YouTube, uh, long title ever, that's all right. We wanna set the device to iPhone, we'll hit next, and we'll just create this on my desktop. Okay, with this done, uh, you notice that there's the app delegate files, we've got a storyboard file since uh, starting Xcode 5, everything has really just switched to storyboards, we've got our view controller files. So our first stop's gonna be our storyboard file, so let's start there. And one of the first things we want to do within the storyboard file is you'll notice that we've got a view controller on our stage area. And a key item to remember about UI refresh controls is they generally work with UI table view controllers. So since this is our first attempt at creating a UI refresh control, what we're going to do is we're actually going to blow away this view controller, select it and delete. And then I'm going to drag a table view controller onto our stage. And so that works great. Now, I could probably start working with this, but one of the uh, one one extra thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and embed this table view controller within a navigation controller. You do not have to do this to make the refresh control work. I'm just being lazy, and I don't want to have to add a UI navigation bar so I can set a title and things like that. So the easiest way to do this is I'm just going to select the table view controller. I'm going to go up to the Xcode menu up top, click on the editor, and then click on embed in navigation controller. So that gives me a free um, uh, UI navigation bar up top. Also, if I ever want to extend this application and actually build it a detailed view, I can do that with no problem. So 
that solves uh, two items there. So we've got that set up. Next, what we want to do is we want to jump over to our viewcontroller.h file. You'll notice that this is set up as a subclass of UI view controller. That's not quite what we want, but we can change that real quick by just adding in the word table there. And now this is a subclass of UI table view controller. Pretty easy. Now let's set up a couple properties. We're going to set up a property, say a property, non atomic strong, and we will create, first of all, a NS mutable array and we'll call it contact list. This has to be a mutable array because we are going to be changing the contents of that array at runtime. Okay, so contact list. And then let's set up another property. Uh, this time what we'll do is we'll create an outlet for our table view. So we'll say IB outlet UI table view and we'll just call this my table view. Why not? All right, so I'm still following sort of the old school process. I know some people don't like doing this anymore uh, since you don't really have to, but I'm going to do the add property add synthesize process. Uh, set up contact list, my table view, command us to save and get that set up. Now, what we'll also need, of course, is the URL that we're gonna hit for our web service, if you wanna call it that. That's the URL that returns us the JSON from our database. And I've actually got this on the site, so I'm just gonna do a copy paste and you'll wanna do the same. And again, like I said, I'll leave that particular URL up, so feel free to use it. Uh, I will clear out the data from it from time to time so you can uh, use it without any worry uh, or just build your own and uh, that way you'll get exactly what you want. Okay, uh, so with this set up, we've got this in place. Now what we want to do is we need to implement two methods. Okay, so the first method that we're going to implement, and I'll do it again the nice clean way, so I'll just say, I'll actually do it in the header file first. We don't, again, don't have to really do that, but we will. It's always good to have good form. And all right, so we want to create a method called start, and then I'm going to create another method called data. Uh, let's call it get data. It's going to take one parameter, which is going to be an NS data object called data. Okay, so with these two in place, I'm going to do a command C, copy that, jump back over to my implementation file, hit PPP. And if you're wondering what this PPP thing is, it's I've got a code snippet that automatically uses that as a shortcut and adds in what's called a pragma mark. Uh, so a pragma mark can be super useful when you've got a long implementation file and you want to jump between methods. It's a nice way to sort of segment your code. Uh, so I'm just going to call these, call this methods. And where this comes into play, of course, is if you come up top to this breadcrumbs, notice this methods, this just came from the pragma mark that we created. Okay, so I'm going to paste this, get a bunch of errors, simply because I need to actually implement something here. Remove that and those errors go away. Okay, so within our start method, let's implement that first. What we're going to do is create an NS URL and we'll call it something clever like URL. And then this will be NS URL, URL with string. And we'll just get, call this get URL because that's the constant, right? And then we also want to create an NS data object. This we'll call data. And then this will be NS data, data with contents of URL, and we just pass it the URL we created a second ago. All right, so with that done, what we want to then do is we want to call our get data method. Now, if you're wondering why am I splitting this up, well, it's more for just modularity reasons than anything else. You could certainly put all of this in one method. I'm just going to separate this out so it's a little bit easier to read. So we're going to do self get data. So and all this is really doing is calling this particular method. So nice and easy there. Then what we're going to do is remember that NS mutable array that we created. What we're going to say contact list is set to NS JSON serialization, JSON object with data, which is going to be data. That's the parameter that's being passed in. The options will set to K nil options. And the error will just set to nil. That way we don't have to provide any kind of NS error object. All right, so with that done, get data is in place, and then we get that data back, and then we call reload. We asked reload the table view by saying my table view reload 
data. All right, so we've got that in place as well. Very good. Next, we need to implement one more method. In this method, we will call, um, again, this is something we're just gonna make up. I'm gonna say void, which is the return type. I'm gonna say refresh view. And it'll take one parameter, which is the refresh control. Refresh. So pretty simple method there. And again, let's do our due diligence and make sure we put this in our header file. Again, you don't have to do that anymore, but being, uh, you know, having good form is always a good thing and it's much easier if you're consistent. All right. So with that done, what we want to do within this um, particular uh, method is first of all, let's set the attribute for our refresh control. So we're going to say refresh dot attributed title is ns attributed string we do an alloc and then we init with string and we set it to let's, call, let's say refreshing data so that's a nice method that tells the the user that the data is being refreshed Once that's done, we say we also let's do an NS log. This is more for us than anything else. We'll just say refreshing data. Okay. And then we will want to call self start, which is this method right here. So this is the method that actually retrieves the new data. Uh, we'll also add some code and create an NS date formatter object. We'll call that one formatter. So you say NS date formatter alloc. And you'll see why we want to create this in just one second. In it. And then we're going to say formatter set date format. And we can then set a string like this. We'll say month, 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 date, comma, hours, minutes, minutes. All right. So you can, if you want to look a little bit more into sort of what this, how this can be set and things like that, you know, make sure you do your own research. Uh, but for now, you can just set this up and then, like I said, tweak it as needed. Uh, let's also create an NS string called last updated. And string with format last updated on percentage A. And what we're going to pass in is an object. And we'll say formatter string from date. And it takes an NS date object. And what we're going to do is just set this to NS date date. So we just get the current, current value. Okay, with that done, all right, so why did this formatting get completely jacked up here? All righty, so we've got that in place. Then what we can do is we can say refresh dot attributed title. So we simply just set that back up and then we set this to, again, NS attributed string, very much like we did earlier. Um, alloc and then in it with string last updated which is the end of string we just created up here okay we also then want to quit that animation so we're gonna say refresh and refreshing and that allows us to essentially wrap up this is the method that like I said will get called when the refresh control fires. All right, so we're about 14 minutes in at this point. What I'm going to do is pause this tutorial and break it up into part two, but we don't have very much um, additional code to write. We should be wrapping this up in just a few minutes. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in, the, in part two.